Jesus, we love you. Praise God. Praise God. Go into Acts chapter 18, if you would stand with me one more time. Acts chapter 18, the beginning of reading of verse number 5. Once again, thank you for allowing me to be here today. Acts chapter 18, and verse number 5 reads, And when Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I'll go unto the Gentiles. And he, notice verse number 7. He, he departed and entered into a certain man's house named Justice. One that worshipped God whose house joined hard to the synagogue. Let's preach with the help of the Holy Ghost this morning on the subject simply, the man next door. The man next door. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping. You can be seated today. Praise God. Isn't it good to be in God's house? Amen. No telling what's going to happen because God is here. If you were to describe the church in one word today, I believe you could use the word connected. Every element, every fiber, every cell of the kingdom involves the church coming together and dwelling in unity. You read Psalms 133. It's good. It's pleasant. It's refreshing, and it's a sure sign of God's blessing when the church is unified and connected. I laughed earlier because my mind went to a social media site that was in existence before Facebook, and it was called Everyone's Connected. Anybody remember that? Years ago. And you were cool if you had an Everyone's Connected account. And I know I'm dating myself when I say it because some of you have never even heard of that. And later on came Facebook, and now over 3 billion people worldwide are connected. But the concept was, and it is true, everybody's going to be connected to something in one way or another. And in everything you're connected to, you need to make sure you're connected to the church. And God ordained the church like this because Everyone who is involved in the work of God must be connected. If we as a body are going to accomplish the will of God, because everything in the kingdom has to do with purpose. Every saint should be connected in the kingdom. If you're a visitor, this is a great place to be connected to. Every ministry should be connected in the kingdom. And every ministry and every facet of the kingdom should all point to the head, which is Jesus Christ. Paul, speaking to the Ephesians, told them in 4 and 11, and some, I'm giving apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. The body of Christ so fitly joined together is such a beautiful concept because it paints a picture of everybody playing a part. Ex-alcoholics, ex-drug addicts, ex-cheaters, 
ex-pornographers, and then those who have never done any of that. Everybody coming together and putting the kingdom first. Everybody expanding the territory of the church. The church as a whole taking dominion and authority in the spirit over our areas and places that God has given us. Reaching into regions and strongholds that the enemy has resided over for far too long. Everybody coming together to tear the devil's kingdom down and building up the kingdom of God and the body of Christ. Exalting him for he is high above the heavens and when all things point to him. Things begin to connect and things begin to flow in order because God is a God of order and inspiration without application always results in frustration. But when everything is connected and everything's working in order, then the body grows. It grows numerically. It grows spiritually. It grows financially. And you are a part of the body of Christ. And whether you like it or not, part of your growth and maturity is dependent upon your connectivity to the body of Christ. You need the body. You need the church. You say, I want to do great things for God. Well, it begins by you becoming connected to the mission. And the mission is not just a UPCI catchphrase. It really is the whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church. But Oftentimes, what hinders the whole church from fulfilling its whole mission is that the church is not whole. And there are deficits in places where there should be completeness. And God's desire is to bring healing to the body so that the church can move forward. But we are, we, we are so good at self-inflicting harm and causing damage. And the mission becomes the victim. And I'm not being negative, but where I'm traveling, I'm seeing a deficit in the body. Body, and it's a deficit of the fivefold ministry. I, I see it in camps and conferences and meetings. And, and where there's a deficit of the fivefold ministry, uh, there is a body that is anemic. The church will not thrive in the end times unless the pastor, the evangelist, the apostle, and the prophet and teachers are active in the body. And that's what we call the fivefold ministry because we need each one of them. And if the fivefold ministry is in operation in the church, then there is a natural flow and a natural connection and a natural growth, and it produces a healthy, functioning, growing church. And you're in a healthy church today. And I'm an evangelist. You ask me what I think the church needs more of, I'm probably going to say evangelist. You ask a prophet what the church needs more of, they're probably going to say a prophet. You ask an apostle, they're probably going to say an apostle. But the reality is we need to be connected to all five parts of the fivefold ministry if we're going to stay connected to the will of God. The body needs the fivefold ministry, and it has to have it in order to function. Hey, if we're going to see miracles, we need the fivefold ministry. If we're going to operate in the supernatural, we need the fivefold ministry. If we're going to see healing, if we're going to see signs and miracles and wonders, if we're going to see growth, if we're going to function as the church and how God intended it to operate, we need pastors, we need prophets, we need apostles, and we need evangelists, and we need teachers. And you've got to stay connected to the church so you can stay connected to the body in which should reside the fivefold ministry so that you can grow and prosper in a proper manner. It is not optional. Revival requires everybody, growth requires everybody. Making disciples requires everybody. I've never, I've, I've never understood those that want the benefits of living for God but don't want to be accountable or connected to God. I can't take my insurance and walk into a, another insurance office and ask them to fix my car after I got an erect. I'm not part of their constituency. How can you say I want the church, but I don't want somebody telling me how I should and should not live according to the Word of God? 
don't, don't tell me you don't need the church. And then when all hell breaks loose and Satan's knocking at your door and you're wondering, where is everybody at in my life and why is nothing natural happening in my life? There's no growth. There's no healing. There's no joy. There's no peace. There's no authority. you got to realize the church never left you. You left the body. And if there is no connectivity to the body, and if the branch has no connection to the vine, no life can flow to it, and no healing can flow, and no deliverance can flow, and no miracles can flow. And and we're going somewhere. But I've learned, Pastor, some people love the chaos, and some people love the stress, and some people love the confusion more than they love the body. Let me just say it. You need the church. You've got to stay involved in the church. It's more than just what you see and experience in a weekly, on a weekly basis by coming to services. But you're a part of the body of Christ. We don't know it all. we got to get to a place where we lay down our pride and say, I need the body. I need the body. And hear me, the body is growing. And the body is thriving. And the body is stretching. And the body is healing. And whatever you do, you got to get connected. Come on, this isn't about just coming in and paying your tithes and doing what the Bible says you're supposed to do. It's about so much more than that. You got to get connected to the services, you got to get connected to the groups, you got to get connected to the outreach, you got to get connected to the ministries, you got to get connected to the mission, you got to get connected to the church because we're all a work in progress. And he that began a good work in you is going to keep on working on you until the day he comes back and God is perfecting you and he's taking your issues and he's getting some glory out of them and you realize I'm not better because of anything I've done. I'm better because in my weakness his strength is made perfect. Hey! We're only here today by the mercy and the grace of God. We're only here today because God saw us and he said they've got more. They're going to do more. They can be more. And we need the fivefold ministry to be active in our life. You need spiritual authority, you need accountability. You need a man of God. And the body gives us all of this. We need each other. And when somebody else in the kingdom begins to grow, it blesses the church. And when somebody else's ministry takes off, it blesses the body. And when somebody else begins to show fruits of understanding and wisdom, the church is blessed. So be careful when you start bruising the body because somebody is succeeding in the kingdom and growing at a faster pace than you are. You are self-inflicting harm when you begin to tear somebody down. Because, listen, a win for a department is a win for the body. A A success for the music team is a success for the body. A win for a brother or a sister is a win for the body by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body under the edifying of itself. Are you ready? And the ministry team needs the outreach team. And the outreach team needs the music team. And the music team needs the hospitality team. And the hospitality team needs the yard team. And the yard team needs the servanthood team. And the servanthood team needs the sound team. And the sound team needs the cleaning team. And the cleaning team needs the pastoral team. And the pastoral team needs the admin. Everything is connected in the house. And this house is built on the chief cornerstone. This house is built on the name above every name. This house is built. I'm preaching about Jesus. Everything we do is for him. Every hand clap is for him. Every worship is for him. So I'll clap as loud as I can. I'll shout as hard as I can.
Praise God. Praise God. How can you claim to be a part of the church when you're trying to kill the church at the same time? We have got to come to a place of edification and resolution that says, no, 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 no. This is my church. That's my man of God. That's my brother. That's my sister. And we're all coming to a unity in our faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful to be a part of the church today because when I go through a storm, I'm not going through it alone. I've got the body. Come on, don't you tear down the church in front of me. The church is what helped me. The church is what fed me. The church is what sustained me. The church is, come on somebody, the church is what lifted me. The church is what kept me. The church is what inspired me. The church is what led me. And when the church comes together, it's a powerful force. And when every part begins to do what it's supposed to do, then the body is edified. And the fivefold ministry can operate. And the the prophet can prophesy, and the pastor can pester, and the evangelist can evangelize, and the teacher can teach, and the apostle can reach. And if there's a lack of fivefold ministry in the body of Christ, it's not because God doesn't want it to operate. It's because somewhere there's a deficiency where it cannot. Stop trying to divide the body and get connected in the harvest. And we'll get to preaching in just a minute, but sit down. Paul said the whole body is fitly joined together. And every part is supposed to be effective and it's supposed to be working. The apostle was so revolutionary in everything that he did. This man who wrote most of the New Testament was profound in his mission to connect the church. Everything Paul did in the body of Christ was for a reason. He didn't just travel the world because he liked to sightsee. He wanted to do whatever he could to edify the body. Everything he did had purpose. Everywhere he went was intentional. Everything he said was for a reason. He was trying to connect the body. He went everywhere. And he goes to Athens and he preaches and he leaves and comes to Corinth and begins to expound the gospel. And in our text today, Paul leaves the synagogue because they've refused to listen to him. And we're introduced to a man that Paul meets whose name is Justice. Acts 18 and 7, and he departed thence and went into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. Now, it's not really my intent to preach about Paul today. Instead, I'm trying to talk to you about, the, there's not really a lot I can convey about him. There are three justices in the Bible, but to be honest, I can't tell you much about this one. Because his whole life has been inserted into one verse of the Bible. Everything we know about him. As a matter of fact, I can't hardly tell you anything about him at all. I wish I could tell you he was a great teacher, but I can't. I'd like to preach to you that he was a great singer, but I can't. I'd like to tell you he was a great soul winner, but I can't. His life story is limited. His life's testimony is limited. His life's work is limited. Everything that history will ever record about him has been put into one verse in Scripture. I can't tell you he preached to thousands. I can't tell you he laid hands on the sick and they recovered. I can't tell you he was a master orator of the Scriptures. I can't tell you how tall he was. I can't tell you whether or not he had kids. I can't tell you whether or not he was a people person. I can't tell you what kind of a car he had. I can't tell you what his profession was, although I can speculate. But somehow, with all of these unknowns about his life, he made it into the infallible word of God. He made it into the same book that gives us our salvation message in chapter 2 and verse 38. And while there's not, listen, while there's not much I can tell you about him, there are two things that the Bible makes sure I am keenly aware of. Number one, he was a horse. And if you didn't know it, and this is your first time here, this is a worshiping church. We believe in worship, not because we're commanded to do it, but because we love to do it. Come on, I love to lift my hands. I love to run. I love to clap. 
I love to shout. I love to dance. Come on, anybody love to do it? Anybody a worship? Come on, I, I, if I stopped right there and that's all the story told about justice, that would be enough. He was a worshiper. And there's a lot you can tell about somebody by the way that they worship. You don't even have to know their whole story. You don't even have to know them. But you can read their story because their life is an open book of worship. How they worship during a trial. How they worship during a storm. How they praise while they're walking through hell. Oh, wow, they're desperate. Oh. I don't even know them, but I can see they're intense. Wow, they're, they're, they're determined. They're careless. They're crazy. Paul was so impressed by him, he said, I'm not even going to tell you anything else about his personal life. All I'm going to write here was, he was a worshiper. Pin drop. Hey, hear me. The devil can take a lot from you, but he can never steal your worship. You've got to give it to him. And that's one of the first steps in disconnecting from the body is when you just sit there and you give your praise to the enemy and you don't do anything during service when everybody else is worshiping. Come on, you're doing exactly what the enemy wants you to do. But you hear me. There are some things that don't belong to the devil. Your worship doesn't belong to the enemy. Your praise doesn't belong to the enemy. Praise belongs to God, but it's got to come from you. Come on, some of you have let the enemy take what does not belong to them. You need to get your worship back. You need to get your praise back. You need to get your shout back. You need to get your dance back. You need to do it all over again. It why don't you take about 20 seconds right now and just do it? Come on. Just lift your hands. I feel something in this house. Lift your hands. Lift your voice and just give him praise. Come on. Just worship him right here. Come on. Some of you move your feet a little bit right now. Come on. Some of you lift your voice a little bit right now. <laughs> Come on. If you don't have a worship, I don't want to hear from you when you have a complaint. If you don't have a worship, I don't want to hear from you when you want to start a ministry. If you don't have a worship, I don't want to hear from you when you want to join the music team. He was a worshiper. Come on, you know what you're doing right now? You're connecting to the body. You know what you're doing when you lift your voice? You're connecting to the body. When you clap your hands, you're getting connected. He was a worshiper. Now, I don't know a lot about him. Brother Greg, there are some things I can assume about him because he was a worshiper. I know they say don't assume, but just go with me on this today. And let's just assume some things about this worshiper because there are some things I've learned about true worshipers. I can assume he was relentless because a true worshiper never lets their past get in the way of their worship. And when they fall down seven times, they just get up again. Yeah, that's who I was, but it's not who I am now. I can assume he was relentless because he said, I'm going, no, 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 no. I don't care what people think about me. I am a worshiper. I can assume he was a party crasher because a true worshiper never needs an invitation. They just show up. The true worshiper don't need the praise leader giving them. Come on, will you praise him? Will you pray? 
Well, they don't need somebody to prod them. Oh, no, 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 no. A true worshiper says, I'm just going to praise him no matter what anybody else is doing. I'm going to praise him no matter what anybody else is saying. I'm going to praise him no matter who else is praising him because I'm here and I'm here to worship. I'm here to give him glory. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care if you think I'm crazy. I'm here and I'm a worshiper. I can assume he could follow directions because a true worshiper always knows where to find God because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. You don't know how, you don't know how to find God? I dare you just to start praising him and watch him show up. Come on, he could follow directions because he knew even when I don't feel like it, I can give God praise and it draws his attention and it makes him come down to me. And I know if I praise him, God's going to show up. I can assume he was a giver because a true worshiper always brings something with him. A true worshiper never shows up to church empty-handed. Even if it's an alabaster box, I'm going to bring it. Even if it's a broken hallelujah, I'm going to bring it. Even if it's a life messed up by sin, I'm going to bring it. Even if it's just a hand, I'm going to bring it. Even if it's just a shout, I'm going to shout as hard as I can. I'm a giver! Come on, give him some praise right now. Come on, give it to him. Give, 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 give it to him. I don't know much about him, but I can, I can assume he was competitive. Because a true worshiper doesn't let anybody else out worship them. Come on, their worship's never based on the approval of others. They don't care what others think about them. Their surroundings don't dictate how they worship. Come on, David. Are you going to dance before Michael? Come on, David. Are you going to dance before the criticism comes from people? Come on, David. Are you going to give God glory even though there's some around you that may make fun of you? We got to get an undignified worship back in the day in which we're living. We've got to get a little bit of a crazy worship back. Come on, somebody. I wish you'd connect right now. Come on, true worshipers worship even during second service. True worshipers worship even in a home group. True worshipers worship. Come on. I'm a worshiper. And if nothing else is ever said about me, let it be said, I was a worship. You can be seated. But the second and only other thing I can tell you about this man was that his house was joined hard to the synagogue. His house was connected to the things of God. This man next door to the house of God, whose house was built around the things of God, it's almost reminding you of when God speaks to Moses in the book of Numbers and begins to tell him, hey, Moses, you name and number the tribes of Israel for war. Judah, you get 74,600 men. Dan, you get 62,700 men. Gad, you get 45,650 men. But then he gets to the tribe of Levi, and God says, you will not number them, but it will be the job of the Levitical priesthood to take care of the tabernacle and to set up the house of God and to take down the house of God. And so intent will their job be that they will pitch their tents directly around the tabernacle so that they will be closer to the house of God. 
God than any other tribe. And the Levites will watch and they will prepare and every aspect of their lives will revolve around the house of God. Some commentaries say that just as house was so close to the house of God, he heard every sermon. He heard every song. He heard every time somebody would open up the scroll and begin to quote scripture. He was so connected with the house of God that it's all he knew. And this is the story of my life. My dad planted a church and started a church in a town in the, in the United States. It was a town of about 30,000 people. And we didn't have much when we started. We started with little wooden pews, about 10 of them, in a little candy factory that we would just start having church and we'd start teaching Bible studies and we'd start going, talking to people and witnessing to people. And we went from there to another building and to another building before we finally built our own building and God began to do great and mighty things, but that was my whole life. Our vacation was going to a conference. <laughs> Our fun time was going to the church and washing windows. I get to mow the lawn today at the church. Yeah. That was our life. And so when people start talking about other things, I just, I'm not much of a hunter. I'm not much of a, a, a golfer. I, I, I don't do a lot. Not because I'm against them or don't like them or anything. I just don't do that. It just, doesn't, doesn't inspire me much. But when you start talking about the things of God, when you start talking about teaching a home Bible study, when you start talking about witnessing to somebody, oh, something comes alive in me. Something begins to happen to me because my life literally revolved around that whole world. My life was so connected to the things of God. That's what drives me. Hey, if justice had kids, they knew what time church started. If somebody came and dropped a FedEx package off at the church, Justice knew about it. If somebody, if somebody had a special meeting at the church, he was there. And hear me, the church is a body that is made up of people I can't tell you everything about. All I can do is see they're intentionally connected because they want to see the body grow and they want to see the body healthy and they want to see the body thrive. It's made up of people who come early and make sure the next service is ready to go. They spend some extra time fasting because they want to see another soul go down in a watery grave. They give a little bit more than they usually give because they're so connected to the house of God. Hey, you got to make sure in everything you do, you stay connected to the house of God. Justice could have lived anywhere. He could have gone anywhere. He could have been connected somewhere. He could have done anything. But all I know about him was that he made sure he was as close as he could get to the church. And if you are going to be effective in the kingdom, this cannot be a part-time gig for you. You're going to have to build your house hard against the things of God. And you're going to have to seek first the kingdom. And some people choose to be connected on the periphery because being close requires accountability. And hear me, somebody. Isolation is the enemy. And the devil wants you to isolate yourself and become disconnected from the body every time you've got an opportunity. Hey, Jezebel wants to confine you to a cave. But somewhere there's got to be a connection with the things of God that goes beyond what others experience, beyond what your mommy and daddy taught you, beyond what you see others doing. There's got to come a point when you say, I'm going to get connected for myself because revival requires everybody. I have a feeling if you had known more about justice, you would have seen that he came to the house of God on youth night. He came to the house of God for prayer meetings. He came to the house of God for music practice. He came to the house of God for outreach. Justice was the one who was never late. 
And we don't have time to wait until it's convenient for you to get connected. Let me just say this today. It is not an obligation to go to church. It is a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to serve the God who saved me. It's a privilege to give him everything because he gave me everything. Come on. So when you don't feel like clapping, I dare you to clap. When you don't feel like, oh, come on, I wish you'd do it right now. When you don't feel like worshiping, I dare you to worship. Come on, worship him, worship him, worship him right now. Come on. Come on, I feel it in the house. I feel, I feel it. Stay standing. Stay standing if you would. But I want you to listen, and I want to preach this today because I want to try and unite the church. I'm not saying you're not, but I'm just saying there are some people that have been on the periphery for way too long, and it's time for you to get connected again. It's time for you to get connected to the body. But listen, he was also, I want you to hear me, please. He was also close enough to the house of God to realize the body was not perfect. And the closer you get to the body and the more connected you are, you're just going to see this is a group of people that have been redeemed by the mercy and the grace of God. Musicians, you can come. The church will never be perfect. But he was joined to it. The church had issues, but he was joined to it. The church had ragged edges, but he was part of it. He saw the scars of the church, but he said, you know what? I've got scars too. He heard all the gossip about the church, but he said, I need the church. He saw all the imperfections, but he said, I'm just a work in progress. And when you get close to the kingdom, you'll realize it's just made up of broken people who are not perfect. People who have issues. People who come in limping on a Sunday morning because of everything they've walked through that morning. with scars people with hurts people with pain it's just made up of broken people and the body is made up of people who are connected so don't bash the church if you claim to be a part of it get involved in every program get involved in every outreach Get involved in the spiritual flow. Hey, make sure your family is connected to the church. Make sure your kids are connected to the church. Young person, in everything you're doing, make sure your schedule is connected to the church. Young adult, I know there's a lot of things that are going to happen in your life, but in everything you do, hear me. Make sure you're as close to the church as you can get because there's going to come a time when you need to say, oh, i got to have the body. I need my brother. I need my sister. So I've got to get connected. And if you're going to know anything else about me besides the fact that I'm a worshiper, Let it be that I was so connected to the house of God that the body was edified. Will you lift up your hands in this house today? And will you just start to connect with what the Spirit is doing right now? 
Come on, I feel the Spirit moving in this house. I don't believe it's by accident that I'm here on a Sunday morning, but I believe the Holy Ghost has ordained me today to begin to try and convince you to draw yourself as close as you can to the things of God again. Come on. I know it's been a long time. I know maybe not everything's the way you think it should be, but I'm begging you today. Come on. Get as close as you can to this thing. You've been on the outskirts for too long. Come on. Lift your voice right now. You've been on the outside for too long. It's time for you to get connected again. Come on, with everything going on in the world right now, please don't leave the church. And if there's anybody in the house that just wants to connect with God all over again, I'm opening up these altars at the front right now because God's standing here and he's saying, come on, why don't you connect with me? Why don't you connect with the church? Because if you can connect with the church, you're going to grow. Because in the church resides the fivefold ministry, and you need that for your life. And in the church, there's healing. And in the church, there's growth. And in the church, there's redemption. And in the church, you can be fed. And in the church is everything you need. Come on, will you just maybe step out of your seat right now and say, I just want to connect with the things of God more than I've ever been connected before. Oh, come on, young person. You ought to get connected today. Come on, I could have shouted this message down a while ago, but God wanted to give somebody the opportunity just to come and say, come on, come on, get connected again. Get connected in the spirit again. Come on, don't come up and just stand here, but I'm asking you, when you come up, lift your hands and begin to say, God, connect me in the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, connect right now. Come on, will you lift up your voice and will you connect to what the Spirit is saying to the church? Come on, this requires participation because revival requires everybody. Ah! Come on, without any music right now, I just want you to lift your hands and lift your voice. Come on, no, 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 no music, no music, no, no singers. But come on, I want you to get connected right now. Everybody, every musician, every media tech, every volunteer that's here today, come on. Lift up your voice and get connected in the spirit right now. Come on, God's calling you, sir. God's calling you, ma'am. Come on. Get connected. Get connected to the ministry. Get connected to the things of God. Get connected. Come on, that's it. That's it. Lift your voice right now all over the house. Oh. Come on, that's it. Enter in. You've been on the outskirts for too long. You've been on the outside for too long. Come on. Today's the day you get connected again. Come on, if you see somebody praying that you know is not where they need to be with God, I wish you'd connect with them right now. I wish you'd draw them in. I wish you'd let them know they're not alone. I wish you'd tell them, come on, we're in this together. We're the body. We need each other. That's it, that's it, that's it. Don't stop. Come on, it may take you more than two, three minutes, but I'm asking you, come on, get connected right now. Get connected. Come on, if you don't know God, today's a great day for you to get to know God. He wants to fill you with His Spirit. He wants you to be baptized in Jesus' name. He wants you to feel the joy of the Lord. 
Come on, he wants you to feel it all over again. I feel the divine unction of the Holy Ghost in this place right now. Come on, I'm asking you, get connected. Come on, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I'm available. I'm available. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my life. I want to be connected to the church. Come on, justice was relentless. Come on, justice didn't care what people thought about him. Come on, the man next door said, I'm gonna get connected. Oh yes, oh yes. Come on, that's it. what I want you to do right now. I want you to connect with somebody. Just connect with somebody who's next to you, around you right now. 
wherever they're sitting, just connect with them right now. And we're gonna pray that God would unite us stronger than we've ever been united. We're gonna pray that God would put a covering over the church that whatever tried to make its way into the church and whatever tr would try to come in and divide the body, it would be cast down and removed. Because in the day in which we're living, there's too many people that are going to hell. And there's too many people that are lost for the church to be divided. And what God is looking for in this end time hour right now is for the church to be unified more than ever before. So I want you to connect with somebody who's next to you right now. And I want you to begin to pray. God, unite us right now. Come on, maybe you don't know him, maybe you do know him. But link together with somebody right now. And just begin to pray and call down heaven. And say, God, whatever we do, don't give room for offense to come in. God, whatever we do, don't let anything come between me and my brother and me and my sister. God, I pray whatever we do right now, you would come down and begin to unify the body. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost right now.